favourite celebrity master chef. We've got 16 celebs all hoping to show off their cooking talent. I'm starting to believe in the possibilities of me being a capable man in the kitchen. They've proved themselves in their own profession. Now let's see if they can cut it in the kitchen. I really want to stay in the competition. It's a bit addictive. You just want to keep going and you say, give me some more, give me some more. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. These four celebrities are competing to become MasterChef champion. I think our four celebs are wondering what it is they signed up for because they've had tough tests and they've got their toughest one yet to come. Today, they're being sent out in pairs to experience their first lunchtime service in a restaurant kitchen. I worked in a chain of well-known London sandwich shops. That was as professional a kitchen as it got. I'm loving the chef wipes. I look like a professional. <laughs> I may not be able to cook like one, but I'm certainly feeling good. I guess we're not in studio, so it's going to be a little bit more pressurised situation yet again. <laughs> Yes, it's, uh, it's like being in an exhilarating nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Shane and Brian are arriving at Angler, a seafood restaurant in the heart of the city of London. In charge of service is head chef Tony Fleming. Morning, gents. Morning. Brian, Shane, Good how morning. are you? How are you? Yeah, very well. Obviously, with seafood, everything's cooked last minute and seconds are very precious, OK? So focus, listen to everything I say. We've got a busy lunch service ahead, so, yeah, yeah we'll see what you're made of. Let's go, guys. Service is in three hours' time. Brian and Shane will each be cooking one dish from the a la carte menu. Right, Shane, today, so the dish you're in charge of is uh, pan-roasted halibut, crab-crushed potatoes, baby herb salad, and a sauce vierge, which is like an olive oil, basil and tomato sauce. So, first things first is the fish. You season it just before it goes into the pan, OK? And go, like that, OK? You give it 30 seconds on there, OK? Just to colour it slightly. A little bit of golden brown, and then into the oven for two minutes. OK, next up, potatoes. Squeeze of olive oil, and then just crush with the back of the fork, OK? Chopped chives, and then a good spoonful of crab, OK? Mix the potatoes together. That's it. Done. And then just to glaze the fish, just to finish it, finish with another butter and a squeeze of lemon. That's it, done. Wow. OK, fish on top. It's a nice selection of herbs. Just take the sauce, give it a mix. Job done. Wow, that ain't no joke. Piece of cake, no? That That's ain't one. no joke. Okay. <laughs> 20 of those at lunch, wow. yeah. Easy, yeah. This is what I was looking forward to, this part of it all. But um, yeah, at the minute, it's very daunting. OK, Brian, right, so the dish you're in charge of today is roast langoustines, slow cooked pork belly, cauliflower, and golden raisins. Pork belly now. They are starting to brown nicely. Sauce, and this will obviously boil up quite a lot. Then a good pinch of raisins. As soon as it's boiled, in the oven. Okay? Yep. Okay. So that'll take about a minute or two. Right. Okay. Right. Now start the langoustines. So 15 seconds turn. Yeah. Knob of butter, lemon juice, finish. You, you take any further than that, the butter will go black. Yeah, and yeah. There'll be black speckly bits in the langoustines. Yeah. That's when we get upset. Yep. Just do a line of the cauliflower puree, OK? Smooth it down. Nice and square. Pork belly. Langoustines. Just in a line. One, two, three. Two pieces of cauliflower. A little bit of olive oil and a little bit of rock salt. OK, so that's that dressed, OK? And finally, 
coriander. Timing is key, is essential. Yeah. Multitasking, is that one of your strong points? How are you oh, multitasking? I'm very strong on multitasking. Really? Yeah, yeah, I'm absolutely brilliant. It's one of my best things. My <laughs> wife's always saying, you're so good at multitasking. And I'm a very calm person as well. Oh, really? Yes, yes. Oh, this is going to be an absolute walk in the park for you then. <laughs> I mean, I'll give you a challenging dish, but I don't know if I've uh, yeah, fallen a bit short. Well, let's see what you made of then, shall we? Yeah, well, it's a bold statement. I'm being slightly ironic. I think. OK, <laughs> fine. All right. I've never cooked anything like this in my life. Until I feel sick. <laughs> Miranda and Chappie will be cooking at the Criterion restaurant in Piccadilly Circus. Running the pass is head chef Matthew Foxen. Hello, good morning. morning. Hi, good morning. We have a very busy lunch today. We've got about 60 covers booked. It's going to be a full on day today. So come with me. During service, Shappy will be cooking a supreme of guinea fowl, crispy potato galette and braised guinea fowl leg with savoy cabbage, plum sauce and a guinea fowl jus. Take one of your guinea fowl. We're going to put it in the oven. Eight right. minutes. Put it in. Yes. Good luck. Close the oven door. Eight minutes. There we go. OK? Right. A handful of cabbage straight into that hot pan. And then what we want to do is we'll add a little bit of vegetable stock into that and just steam it very quickly. Yeah. And then we'll just season it. And that will be ready to go onto the pass. We put a good spoon of the plum sauce. In the centre of the plate, we're going to put a spoon of cabbage, beautifully soft thighs. The potato galette is going to go in between and on the plate. And the guinea fowl jus that we've made from the carcasses of all the guinea fowls, and that will be the final plate. Do you think you'll be able to put up a plate like that every time? I will, yes, that looks easy enough. Fantastic, good news. I think I'm right with the presentation, but genuinely I'm so hungry and it looks so good. It's going to be really hard not to eat it. For service, we pop one in. We get a nice golden brown colour on it like that. Miranda's dish is a lamb, spinach and mushroom spring roll with a porcini puree, sautéed spinach and a lamb jus. And then we'll be placing that inside the oven for about eight minutes for a medium. OK, you got a timer on your oven? Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm so pleased about that. Sautéed spinach, all I want is a little bit of butter inside there. You can see that butter is starting to almost burn. That's going to give us a slightly nutty flavour. Nuzette, you can smell it, it's almost got like a slightly nutty flavour to it. Mm, that yeah. smells good, yeah. Drain that out. Right. And we'll get plating. Okay. Okay? Yep. In the centre of the plate, we'll be putting some of that porcini puree, spinach. And then we're just going to slice it on the diagonal. Wow, okay. look at that. In place, push it down, and then to finish it off, a little bit of lamb jus, put on the plate. Wow. And that's how I'm going to expect every plate to go out. Looks okay. stunning. I'm really worried about just making that first one look so beautiful. The chef did it so quickly and so naturally. I'm going to be struggling and fumbling, and it's all going to go horribly wrong. It's just gone 12, and over in the city, the lunchtime rush is about to begin for Shane and Brian. We can't send anything unless it's completely perfect, because we have never done that since we've opened, so I'm not going to start doing it now. Good luck, man. Good luck, man. You good? Yes. I don't think we've been laughing too much, do you? No. Okay. First order, three langoustines, main course, three halibut. Yes, chef. OK, oh, three. So I do three at once? Yeah. Oh, right, OK, right. Just place it gently, perfect. Anything there? Perfect. 
and then three portions of raisins in. A little shake. Mind the door, mind it'll spring back, yeah? OK, good. Right now, langoustines. Is that enough oil? Yeah, you don't want to deep fry them. No. <laughs> Do straight line, yeah. Okay. You need to just like calm down a little bit, breathe, and just nice, fluid motion, nice and composed, yeah. A touch more puree next time, yeah. yeah. Just stop, just stop shaking because it's not doing you any favours. Did you dress that with olive oil and salt? No. Right. It's going to come to a point where I'm going to be down there helping Shane, and you will be on your own. Yeah. Can't wait any longer. The restaurant manager stood at the door, which tells me that he's wondering where the food is. He tells me you're too slow, yeah? yeah? So you need to move. That's right, he's got to go to the restaurant. Oh, no. It's got yeah. sauce all over it. Right, I'm going to go down there now. I'm going to come back and I'm going to dress four with you in six minutes, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Go, go 15. This is difficult. It's just remembering everything that's coming up. It's just so hard. On the other side of the kitchen, Shane is busy working on his first order. Three halibut on the go. Right, you ready? Three portions of potatoes, sauce. Uh, just get in there, chef. OK. Check the seasoning of the potatoes, taste them. Yep, nice. Not about butter in the fish, straight in. Yeah, don't smash the fish. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Sorry, chef. Sorry, don't chef. smash the fish up, yeah? Just need to glaze it. It looks, seriously, it looks beautiful. Give me every single one like that, I'd be fine, OK? Take it off, chef. Enjoying it very much. The keys don't know what you're doing. Give me a week in here and it might be all right. Give me an hour in here, you haven't a clue. Right, herb salad for three. Yeah, nice. Yeah, nice, 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 nice. A little bit tidier, a little bit more finesse, yes, a little bit more focus, you'll be fine, okay? Yes, sir. One minute on the next one, go and do the potatoes, yes, yeah? Sir. Let's go. Service here, wipe these plates. So Shane's done fine so far, but there's another 12 on order. So the next 15 to 20 minutes is crucial for Shane. Good start, but when he gets through the next 15, 20 minutes in the same fashion, uh, we'll see. Over in Piccadilly, service is underway for Shappy and Miranda. Raj, check on lamb guinea fowl. I want that lamb medium, please. OK, yes, chef. Check on one soup, one pot of shellfish, followed by two lamb medium. Yes, chef. Thank you. I'm slightly terrified now. The adrenaline's really close. Wow. You've got your mushroom puree hot? Yep. You want to put your lamb you on? OK. Yep. Yes, chef. OK. Right. Yep. A little bit of butter. Go quickly. Take it off the heat. Yeah. Work it. Yeah. Right. That's burnt. Well, I just throw in the spinach, but luckily it only takes 30 seconds to make, so I can rectify my mistakes, but it's really difficult getting it right. Oh, look at that, man. Spinach on top. Yeah. OK. Yeah, they want it medium, that's fine. Push it on top of the, the spinach. It's going to fall over. Right. Push the lamb down a little bit more. Try not to pile the spinach too much in the middle. Try and keep it flat. OK. okay. Service, please. Table 31, two lamb. It looked really nice. I would be really pleased if I, if I had that served to me. So first one's over, now I can just get on a roll and get going. It's great. Really pleased. Shappy's first orders for guinea fowl are in. Check on two mushroom soup followed by guinea fowl papadeli. We oui, chef. Yes. Guinea fowl in. Let's in. go. Yeah. Oh, in the thing. In the oven. We do need to cook them. Put two on the same tray. I only want two in. I don't need five in. Oh right. Yeah. So... Okay. So there you go. Close the door. Mains away, table 21. One guinea fowl, one papadeli. I need the garnish. I need the right, plum, yes. cabbage, braised. 
So what we're going to do now is that we're going to go on both tables at the same time. So you're going to be plating two guinea pies. Two guinea pies. Okay. okay. Can I get you to speed up, please? Yes, chef. You're going to need to start working a bit quicker. It's painful. Right. Yep. OK, I'm going to have to step in here and sort this out. OK. Right, can you count how many guinea fowl you got and start putting them in the oven? OK. OK. Check, so here. OK. Two. One. I've only got one. You've got one, two, three, six, seven. Seven guinea fowl. Seven guinea fowl. Sikarina? Nine, man. Yep. I think Chappie is probably a little bit of a wild card um, at the moment. If I'm worried about anyone, it would be Chappie. Back in the city, the restaurant is at full capacity. And Brian is overwhelmed with orders for his langoustine and pork belly dish. Right, langoustine, wild bass and a cod. Yes, chef. Now we're really in trouble. Uh, it appears that I'm on my own, yes. <laughs> and you've got another four straight after, yeah? I've got... I've, I've got... Have I got... Uh, I've got two straight I've after. I've got eight now, haven't I? No, no, yeah, no, 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 no. You've got four on now. Just four. Two and Four two. lots, you mean? This is the way a proper chef works. You do one table, you get halfway through it, you start the next table. Yes. Halfway through that one, you start the next table, yeah? That's yeah. how it works. And now you want to get the pork belly on for the next table. Two. Get the two on now, I've got... For this one. Right. Can you do that? If it's going to confuse you, huh? Yeah. So I've got, I've got, I've got those on. Yeah, four. Four. And now you're going to start the next two. Two. OK. Brian, are you listening? Three more, yeah? So four, two, two, three. Yeah? <laughs> it's a nine. <laughs> yeah. So my two langoustines, two halibut. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yeah, yeah. You've got fifteen portions on order, like fifteen. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, there's a point where it's just like beyond. Right, let's just go, let's focus, keep it up, give four up, we'll help you dress, okay? We'll have to help them on. Brian just got swamped, everyone's eating languacy. It'd take any good chef to go through that, to be honest. But he's not doing himself any favours either. He's just spinning on the spot now, he's totally lost. There's a point where he's just gone beyond, and he's just, yeah, he's gone beyond that now, so we're gonna have to go and help him. <laughs> While Brian gets help with his dish, orders for Shane's halibut are also flying in. OK, Shane, you've got five halibut away next. Five. Five halibut, yes, Listen, yeah. one of them, no crab in the potatoes. Crunch time now, yeah? Keep it together. Go down now, we're all out here, right? Five, Focus, no five, yeah, one no crab, right? Get a pan on. Right, I need to move now, Shane, yeah? A little bit quicker, please. Yes, sir. Right, basting that fish, basting that fish. Potatoes up. You've got your basil julienne for your sauce. So after this five we're dressing on the pass now, we're yes, going sir. another four, yeah? That's going to come up now in six minutes, yeah? Here we go, I want to tell you that. Focused in the zone. To be a little bit quicker, but it's his first day. But so focused, it's not flapping at all. So yeah, good, good. Perfect. Looks nice, nice and tidy. Good show. Well done. Very good. Very good. Okay, go. Have no clue how many I send out. Maybe ten, maybe eleven. But feels like 110 or 111. Across town, service is drawing to a close. But there's no respite for Miranda. How many lambs have you got working? Uh, loads. Yeah, that's not exactly a number. How many okay, lambs? Uh, five, six, seven, eight. That's correct. Yeah. Thank you. Have you got them all in at a sequence? You know which one's coming out first, yep. which one's gone in? Yeah. Fantastic. I hope you know which one's coming out first. I don't know which one's which at all. No idea. Just keep stirring the sauce. In the default setting, stir the sauce. Right, mains away, two lamb. Okay. Medium. How long? Um, 30 seconds in the oven, and then we've got to plate it. The 
Let's try and keep the spinach. In. Yep. I want them to have a clear definition between where the spinach is and where the mushroom puree goes. It's done, Chef. Right, Miranda. Yes, Chef. We have oh. rims on the plate for a reason. Okay. I don't want the sauce on the rim of the plate. Yes, Chef. Okay. It's just a lot coming at once, and I need to work on my presentation a little bit more. The chef is so particular about how it looks. Meanwhile, Shappy is struggling to keep up with the frantic pace of the kitchen. Check on one tureen, two mushroom soup, and one guinea fowl. Hey, chef. Guys, listen up. BRP table away. Two salmon, one guinea fowl. Yeah, chef. I've lost count of um, how many guinea fowl I have to put in the fridge. In the oven. Two salmon. Guinea fowl. Yeah. We share. Yeah. I think mine are done. Oh, heavens above. Yowzers. Oh, blimey. Oh, that's hot, isn't it? Sorry, thank you. Oh, help. When I'm under pressure like this, I tend to shut I tend to shut down. I'm like C3PO, I just have to shut down for a while. Just to get the garnish up on the plate for two, it seems to be a struggle. I need one guinea fowl now. Now, right Let's go. minute. Let's go. I know what it feels like to be waiting for my food and it not being here. Um, you just cannot mess with people when they're hungry. OK, service, please. All right, guys, last table. Two lamb. Let's make this one perfect, please. Yes, chef. How long for these two lamb medium? Uh, just the spinach, chef. OK, let's go quickly, please. Yeah. You want a jus? Service, please. Positions two and three. Miranda, good job on that. You're plating much better. Thanks very much. Woo. When Chef gives you a bit of praise, it just makes everything worthwhile. So it's great. It's really good. I'm really pleased. Right, guys, can you come here, please? Thank you very much. I think you've done a great job for a busy lunch. Thank you. Can we wipe down our sections? End of service. Thank you very much. Wow. Oh, oh. Thank you. Oof. I think the chefs did OK today. It was a busy service. I wasn't massively impressed, but I wasn't disappointed at the same time. Shappy, I think, struggled from beginning to end. Quite slow on plating, but her presentation was very good. There was very few plates that I could fault from her. Yeah, I found that really tough. I think Chef knew that I was a bit bewildered in between plating, so I don't think that impressed him. I think Miranda did very, very well. She did have a tough dish, she had a lot of orders on. She did struggle on a few of them, but as a whole, she did very well. I can't believe we did 60 covers. Time just flew. It was just one after another, after another, after another, and before you know it, it's all over. It's just a real whirlwind. But wow, I'm just looking forward to a to a sit down and a, and a cup of tea. For Brian and Shane, service is winding down. Brian, four more. Yeah, pull belly on. Yes, chef. Just langoustines to go in, chef. Good, good. And Brian is finally back on track. I got swamped, yeah. It's like a big tsunami came and <laughs> washed over me. <laughs> that's very exciting. Right, I think that's ready. They're ready to go, aren't they? So, last one, make it nice, yeah? So, make sure you finish on a good note. That's it. Did you get some help with that, or is that all your own work? Yeah, all my own work. Really? Did you help him with that? Not, not with the plating. plating really? Yeah, thank you. Definitely. It's nice and neat. No shaky lines too much. The Razors lines are in the right place. Chef, That's good. You. Your lines have improved. Very good. But let's move it up, yeah? Don't get too carried away. What table? That's it. That's it. Okay. 20, 25. Chef. Chef. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, mate. Thank you so much.
Well, I learned a lot, I have to tell you. Jane, this is what we're going to remember you by, yeah? Yes, this is your last four. Make it perfect, okay? Yes, sir. Good. Mix it and dress. Let's go. Cooked absolutely perfectly, Shane. Well done. Very good. Thank you, sir. Come on, finish it nicely. Four salad, four salad. Let's go. Four salad, Colin. You got quite a dainty touch for such a butch lad, you know that. I'm in a boy band, sir. You're a boy band. <laughs> so call for service, table nine and table eleven. Table nine, table eleven. Let's go, yeah. Yeah, yeah, all right. Don't spoil it. Yeah, go on. <laughs> let's go. Let's go, Stephen. Move. OK, very good, Shane. Well done. That's the end of your service. I saw your dishes. Well done. Thank you, Chef. 60 covers, probably, in the space of 45 minutes. It's tough for anyone, to be honest. Yeah, it was uh, quite a tough service. So Brian initially was like rabbit in the headlights. I think he was just like baffled by it all. But as he went on, he gained a little bit of confidence. In the last two or three tables he's sent, we've been a much cleaner. I think I certainly improved from the beginning of service to the end. To actually go in to a place like this and actually cook and create something gives you a little bit of confidence. Shane, much more focused. Everything I told him to do at the beginning, he took on board and he did the way that I told him all the way through the service. So that was quite impressive to see. That was absolutely unbelievable, I have to say. I enjoyed it when it was finished, but going through the emotions was very difficult. It's just so... You've got to focus deeply to do this job. Service may be over, but the celebrities must now head back to MasterChef headquarters to fight for their place in the competition. Being back in the MasterChef kitchen, I feel a little bit more comfortable. Hopefully, it'll be a little bit more relaxed. <laughs> How can it be more relaxed? What I'm trying to do is say to myself, hey, enjoy it while you're in it. Um, because it's going to be over, you know, <laughs> fairly quickly, maybe. <laughs> I am delighted to be here, but it's not a breeze for me whatsoever. I really have to get stuck in, get my mind around what I'm doing. I'm finding the competition tough in a good way, but it's not easy. It makes me want to really, really get through. Welcome back to the MasterChef kitchen. I hope we haven't pushed you too hard and you've got some energy left, because you're going to need it. This is the invention test, and today you're going to work in teams. Each team is going to cook for us one main course and one dessert from the set of ingredients you have in front of you. We want you to show us what you've learned. You'll have 10 minutes to plan your dishes, and then after that, one hour to cook. Off you go, 10 minutes. Good luck. Right, I'm no good with pudding, and I've never cooked rabbit. Okay. Their ingredients include rabbit, pancetta, walnuts, mushrooms, blackberries, apples, carrots, bread, and a selection of fresh herbs. We can cook the rabbit down in honest, honest you. Yeah. Right? How long will that take? We've only got an hour, haven't we, to get yeah, yeah. two both dishes. That should be all right. So, a bit of liver here, a bit of liver there, mm -hmm. mash underneath. OK. Can we do a jus? A jus is good. A jus, because then you can... I don't know how to do a jus. Do you jus? No, I don't jus, but we could try We can try a jus. We could do a quick um, apple crumble. Blackberry and apple is classic, so blackberry and apple crumble. So that's good. No crumble. You can't do crumble. Oh, no. Crumble's what you're making at home. You've been being MasterChef now for enough times, okay. you can do something sophisticated. <sighs> what about pudding? I don't make any puddings. OK. You decide on your dishes. One hour. Let's cook. The kind of stuff we've done has phased me. I have been a little bit taken back by them, but I feel I have met my challenges. 
As far as cooking goes, up to now, my skill base has been fairly narrow, so I'm trying to push it wider. Gentlemen, two dishes in an hour. How are you feeling about it? feel all right, I guess. Brian seems to be cracking on there, making... Uh, what are you making, Brian? It's a blackberry and apple pie, I think. Blackberry and apple pie? Or tart. Tart. Brilliant. Good to hear it. And uh, so that means that, you obviously, you're, if you're peeling the potatoes, Shane, you're doing a main course, what are you going to cook for us? Well, to be honest with you, as per usual, I'm not sure till the end, kind of a thing. It's all of a concoction of a bit of red wine. I've just seared the hind legs of the rabbit there and just cooking it down. A little bit of a crumbly, crispy kind of a bacon top. Wow. Interesting. I hope so. <laughs> How many times have you cooked a rabbit before? I've watched my father do it many times when I was a kid, but I've never actually cooked it before myself. Brian, you don't actually seem like you might be a pudding king. No, I'm not a pudding king. I have never, ever done anything like this before. Can you do it? I'm, I'm, well, I'm, I'm hoping I can. Why have you gone with things that you have no idea how to cook? Well, because I, uh, I don't know how to cook anything, so I have to start somewhere. Shane's rabbit with red wine is a lovely idea. Never had it before, never seen the process before. Who knows what could happen? A bit scared by the prospect of making a dessert, but he has made some good pastry. He's now attempting to make a tart. The problem is, John, he does not look confident. Oh. 20 minutes gone. Third of the way through. <laughs> I'm really enjoying being out of my comfort zone. This is like being on a roller coaster and wanting to go back on, even though it made you feel sick. I learnt a huge amount working in that restaurant, and I hope that I'll be able to take some of that knowledge into the kitchen today. And then put it on top and then wrap it like that. Then you, you've got nothing to cover this with, though. No, I know. But then we'll tuck it in and wrap it round. Would, you, would that work? This is an interesting uh, way of working. You're both working on the same dish. But it was a joint effort. We're no, working that, as a team. That's amazing. That's brilliant. But have you started on your dessert yet? Uh, no, it's, but it's in our heads, isn't it? It's in our heads. It's percolating. Well, don't, don't put too much on. Tell us about your two dishes. We are making roast rabbit with a mushroom duxelle on a bed of herby mash with caramelised carrots and a plum jus. Plums? Not plums. Prune jus. Prune jus. Good. Dessert? Pancakes. Pancakes with? With cream and fruit. We're not just going to slop the food on a plate. We're going to present it beautifully, arrange it beautifully. Have you cooked rabbit before, though? Never. How are you going to stop that rabbit leg from going really dry? There's no fat in it at all. Can I be honest, or do you want me to wing it? I'm going to be honest and say I, I didn't consider that, the no, dryness no. of the rabbit. OK. But I think leaving it on the bone, that will make it more likely to become tender. I do feel with this rabbit, it's a bit like the blind leading the blind because neither of them seem to have much of a clue on how to cook it. Fruit pancakes, lovely idea. But at the moment, we've actually got no dessert inside. You've got 20 minutes left. 20 minutes left. Don't ask. You have no idea what you're doing, do you? No, I don't. Right, you've got two and a half minutes, OK? You've got to start plating up now. Perfect. That's it. Time's up. Time's up. Miranda and Shappy's main is roast rabbit leg with a mushroom duxelle wrapped in pancetta with pan-fried liver, thyme mash, carrots and a prune and red wine sauce. I'll tell you what, you can see what it is you've learned about presentation because these are two of the smartest dishes either of you two have served up, so well done. Let's just hope it's all cooked properly. Yes. We. <laughs> they are raw. Right, let's have a look at this rabbit. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Almost. 
Some of it you're going to be able to eat, but some of it you're not. Apart from those uncooked livers, that's a really nice dish. Soft rabbit with crispy, salty bacon, and you've made a lovely, fruity, deep, rich sauce to go with it. Well done, you've kept the rabbit lovely and moist. I think that your flavour of your sauce with the sweetness of the prune, the sharp sourness of your red wine is great. It was a bit of a wing and a prayer, and you seem to have done it. Good job. Well done. Let's have a look at these pancakes. To follow, they've made pancakes with blackberry creme fraiche, lemon vanilla cream and a blackberry sauce. Nice. Decent presentation. White and red here is sophisticated. I think pink here is a little bit like kids' tea. Well-made pancakes, really good idea. However, I'd like it a little sweeter and tasting more of blackberry. Okay. I'm with Greg. It's got to be sweeter than that if it's going to be a dessert. That filling inside there needs to be really sweet and rich with blackberries. Lots more fruit needed, but not bad pancakes. Thank you. For their main course, Shane and Ryan have made rabbit leg cooked in red wine with red onion, crispy pancetta, crushed potatoes, mushrooms and carrots. I think it looks a bit of a fright, and I think your rabbit's all a bit dry, but the taste is great. When you bring all those flavours together, mushroom, carrot, potato, rabbit and red wine, it's a really delicious thing. That rabbit with the red wine around it is an actual delight. I think you've got the makings of a really good cook. I think a lot of what you do is on instinct, but I think you can trust those instincts. For our main course, to a dessert. For dessert, they've made a blackberry and apple tart with lemon cream. It's got no form. It's got no elegance. Lemon, I don't know the association of lemon on the plate. Maybe it's to drop in your gin and tonic to get yourself really drunk while you eat your tart, but it's pretty shabby, mate. Yes. Let's just hope it tastes a lot better than it looks. <laughs> Die. I've got two problems. One is that it looks shocking, and the other one is that the apples need to be cooked down further. However, it tastes amazingly good. You've got the sharpness of the apple juice seeping out into the blackberries and you've sweetened the cream to absolute perfection. I really like the taste of the blackberry, the apple, with the sweet, buttery, crispy pastry. The crispy bits of the pastry. The thing is, Brian, your technique is a shambles. Your flavours are great. Well done. Thank you very much indeed. We're going to now send you off and you need to get yourself mentally ready for your final task. Off you go. Well done, boys. Well done. Oh, he loved how it tasted. I I was dying. Really I was dying. I've loved this test. I found this fascinating. There was a really interesting dynamic going on between Miranda and Shappy. There were some things which were really good and really tasty, and some things didn't quite work, but it was definitely the coming together of two minds. Both Shane and Brian have got very good palates and can flavour their food really well. Both of them got a lot of work to do on presentation. They are actually making a silk purse look like a sow's ear. <laughs> One more chance to go, and one of these cooks is going home. I tell you what, I'm, I'm really excited about them cooking their own dishes because I think they've all got promise, and I mean that. Over the past two days, the celebrities have tried their hand at invention, mass catering, and a professional restaurant kitchen. 
Now everything comes down to one final test. You are now cooking your own dish, your own creation. We want to be impressed. You'll have one hour, and at the end of this, one of you is going home. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. I've only done this dish twice. What I would love for them to say is, you know what? That's not half bad, Brian. I've got to congratulate you for working the tidiest I've ever seen you. <laughs> yes, I'm not saying an awful lot. Is it? It's not going to last. <laughs> no? No. What are you going to cook for us? Lamb fillet on a garlic infused mash, a pea puree, and caramelised carrots. So, what are the tomatoes for? That's to make the jus, which is a balsamic. Uh, you. I think it sounds heavenly. Oh, well, bless you for that. Yeah. <laughs> what have you got out of the competition so far, Brian? It's really widened my horizons because I have been very narrow focused in what I do and I've done the same stuff for years and years and years, you know. And my wife and I actually had a row about this earlier in the year. But what this show's done, it's made me focus and it's already opened my eyes to so many different things. Brian is doing classic British food. My big concern, I think the flavours might be a little bit too big for that poor little lamb amongst it all. You've had 15 minutes, guys. 45 to go. I'm really excited about what I've planned to cook. I just want them to see what a good cook I am because I do love food and I do put a lot of passion in food. Happy Shappy? I'm kind of happy, yeah. Your food today for the first time. Is this a dish from Iran? This is a dish from Iran. It's called Khoresh Abodim Jun and it's a lamb and aubergine dish. I want to do this justice because I've made it lots of times before and I do not make it and I will never make it as well as my mother, but that's something that I have to live with. Why out of all the dishes in the world would you choose to make us this one? It's my favourite. I love, I love aubergine. I can't get enough of aubergine. These are spices from my grandma in Iran. They, ah. get, they get sent over in a suitcase every sort of month. This is the first time I've seen you speaking really passionately <laughs> about food. What's happening? I love my Persian food. Shappi's got an Iranian dish that sounds absolutely delightful. It's all about comfort food, John, so we know it won't be pretty, so the cooking of it has got to be absolutely perfect. I'm very excited. Actually, you know what? I don't care how Shappi's dish looks. I just want it to taste delicious. 25 minutes have gone, 35 minutes left. My biggest worry is that my dish is not exciting enough. It tastes brilliant, I know that. It's food that my family like to eat, but is family food enough for John and Greg? I don't know. Wow, Miranda, you are being ambitious. Well, I don't know if this is ambitious, because this is a dish that I cook for the family a lot, but I've just singed it up a bit. Tell me what this dish is that you regularly cook for your family. Well, the kids love making pasta, so I've made some pasta, spicing it up with a bit of chilli oil and serving that with salmon, steamed with sesame oil, soy sauce and sherry. I think the presentation's going to be the trickiest thing for this. Uh, I almost wish I hadn't chosen this one, but anyway, uh, because of the presentation, because that's going to be really tricky. But I'm going to go for flavour too. What's your ambition for the competition now? I want to get through this round. Uh, I want you to love what I'm cooking. Uh, I want you to enjoy eating it and uh, give me a chance to do a bit more. She made her own pasta and she's going to serve that with really an Asian flavoured salmon. I think it's an odd combination to do egg pasta with an Asian dish.
if I'm coming into this competition, there's no point in me making beans on toast. I'm not trying to make life easy here. I'm all in or nothing. Shane, you have got some beautiful ingredients, mate. Beautiful. I've had this dish, and it's one of my favourite dishes from a uh, childhood. My family have been going to Portugal since I'm four years old. What is this dish from, from your childhood? It's a cataplana, a shellfish cataplana. Cataplana? I've never heard of it before. Really? Basically what's in it is a bit of onion, white wine, garlic, cook it all down really and last, uh, add the fish at the last minute. And uh, you know, we now know these as longestine, but of course you know them as Dublin Bay prawns. Good old Dublin Bay prawn indeed. Beautiful thing. You're enjoying this competition. I am. I've had a fantastic time. I've come in here to learn, to gain knowledge, and to have, you know, I've smiled through the whole competition. Love the sound of the dish, Shane. Do it justice. OK. Shane's going back to his childhood, a dish he's eaten whilst on holiday in Portugal. Wonderful, rich longestine, clams and monkfish. John, those flavours sound absolutely perfect. All of the skill is in the timing of those fish. Just seven minutes. Just seven minutes. Four minutes. That's it. Time's up. Time's up. Shappy has made an Iranian dish of aubergine with lamb meatballs, served with saffron basmati rice and a side of cucumber and yogurt. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Really, really enjoyed that. There is a sweetness and a smokiness in the sauce. You've got all that delicious, slippery aubergine and a lovely taste of saffron. Very, very good indeed. I don't know whether it's like your mum's, but uh, Shappy's dish is good enough for me. I think your rice is just a little bit under. Undercooked, yes. Uh, but for the rest of it, I think it's glorious. Oh, how nice. I really think it's, it's heavenly. I love that sort of sweet stickiness with those beautiful melt-in-your-mouth aubergines. I like the spices of the sweet meatballs and the refreshness of your yoghurt. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shappy. Pleasure, my pleasure. What they said about my food really delighted me because um, it's a dish that I love, that I've eaten all my life, and if they hadn't liked it, I felt like they didn't like me. <laughs> you know, I am that dish. Miranda has steamed salmon in sherry, soy sauce and sesame oil and served it with linguine tossed in chilli oil and creamed savoy cabbage and baby leeks. I don't want to criticise you unfairly. I do feel, however, there are some dishes that just don't need to be pritted up. They need to stay in a bowl. You started this dish as a pasta dish, we've now got pasta as well as Asian flavours and we've got a fusion dish and I think it's becoming confusion rather than fusion. I'm finding it difficult to understand how soy sauce, lots and lots of sesame oil and chilli work with cream with my cabbage and my leeks. They seem like they're two different things on a plate. Nice flavour of, of sesame oil which makes it a very Asian dish and a little hint of chilli. I'd happily eat it all but I would probably forget about it by the next day. Oh, I'm a bit deflated after that. Um, I tried to zing up uh, a dish that I cook at home and I don't think it really worked. Shane has made a cataplana, a Portuguese seafood dish with monkfish, 
clams and longustines in a tomato, garlic and white wine stew with a side of garlic and onion rice. I really appreciate this a wonderful thing you've done. I think the, the generosity of it, you can put this on a plate. And in a bowl. Oh. Uh, no, I know, but I think you can because I think you can do it in such a way you could do a single portion if you wanted to. Oh, come on, this is this is splendor. It's a feast. I don't agree with him. I think it should come to the table like that. So I Although I've got to say, Shane, uh, how many of us are supposed to be eating this? Look at it. What do you think I am? Henry the Eighth. <laughs> no, you haven't had that many wives yet. <laughs> 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 right. Shane, you cook your fish beautifully. Your clams are salty and rich and your longestines are cooked really, really nicely. Um, I feel that that sauce, the broth around the outside, needs to be a little bit thicker. I think it's well flavoured, I think it's really tasty. For me, quite difficult to eat. But, hey, I'm a fussy old bloke. For me, your fish is slightly over, but the flavours of this Portuguese dish are, are superb. The sweetness and the acidity of those onions is meeting the sweetness and the acidity of white wine. Perfectly soft rice. A delicious, a delicious dish. Very, very well done. Shane, thanks very much, mate. Crikey! That's a big old dish, I like that. It's got a good touch, though, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel good, to be honest. Um, you know, I couldn't have done any better, and that's the God honest truth. I put all of my knowledge into them pots and pans and created what I had to create. Brian has cooked roasted loin of lamb with garlic-infused mash, pea puree, honey glazed carrots, and a lamb and balsamic jus. I think it looks great. Really, the lamb's lovely and pink, you can see that, a little sort of vibrant mound of pea puree. You, you've even given us a, a Christmas tree. All we need now is a few baubles and we'll be happy. It's a little bit Sunday roast-ish, but that's absolutely fine by me as long as it tastes right. Brian, on your plate, you have a really delicious, punchy mint and pea puree. You've got sweet carrots covered in honey. Your potato puree is wonderful, well seasoned and flavoured with garlic. And you've got this rich, wonderful sauce, sweet with balsamic vinegar. For me, Brian, the lamb is lost. It's just overpowered by everything. And as good as everything else is, I want to taste lamb and I can't taste any lamb. John is right, it is overpowered by the other flavours. However, I think that whole thing is delicious. The lovely sweetness and acidity going through that sauce that you've made. Sweet peas, there's a sweet glaze in the carrots as well. I think that is absolutely delicious. Wow. Thank you, Brian. Thank you very much. Thank you. I was so thrilled. I thought there was, I was waiting for the, for the bad bit. It is saying, you're this, you're that, you're the other, and then, and then Greg, when, when he said he really loved it, it's quite extraordinary. I just couldn't believe it. As far as I'm concerned, you four have saved the very best till last. One of you will be leaving us. We've got a big decision to make. We'll get you back in as soon as we've made it. Thank you. Off you go. Do you know what? All four of them, I believe, cooked good dishes. Their own food is sound and it's got real foundations that you can build on. Have you got a best dish from the four? Shane. See, I agree with you. I think Shane today has actually done another good job. He's come in as the person who says he doesn't have much skill, but he seems to deliver on flavour every single time. Overall, I think today was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. My final dish was as best as I could make it, so I'm really pleased with today, to be honest. So Shane goes through, we agree? Certainly. Okay. 
I'll tell you who surprised me over the last rounds is, is Shappy, because she had a very good invention test. And today, John, we've seen her own food. It's different and it's delightful. Up until the last couple of challenges, Shappy had a lot to prove, and I've got to say, she has proved it. She's proved her worth. It's good to see Shappy finally shine. I really want to stay because I really want to make more Persian dishes, and I'm just loving every minute of it. I'm really loving every second of being here. All right, well, that's it. Shappy's through, and, and so is Shane. This is now a decision between Brian and Miranda. Miranda has got good technical ability. There is a weakness, and, and that weakness might be the ability to wow. Yes. The dish itself didn't come together and didn't make sense. It was too confused. I'd really like to stay. I'd like to do some more. I'm having fun. I need to make my cooking more exciting. I don't want to have the chance to do that. I really like Brian's dish today. I like the sweetness and, and the sharpness that flavours that went with the lamb and the, the lovely sauce he made with the hint of balsamic. We do know he's got a great palate. His food always tastes good, but technically, you know, Brian's got a lot of issues. Unfortunately, I have been bitten by the bug. It's the scariest thing ever. <laughs> but I want some more of it. <laughs> Tough decision. Who stays, who goes? I can tell you now, this has been right to the wire, a really close one and a very tough decision. The person leaving us. Miranda. to be going home. It's been tremendous fun and a really enjoyable experience and I've loved it every, almost every minute of it. Some of the minutes I haven't loved so much but it's been really fantastic. Well done, congratulations. Thank you. I'm just a little bit taken back to be honest. It's like having a forced kiss or something that was. It's ridiculous. I'm just a bundle of <laughs> nervous energy. That was like waiting to hear for my A-level result results on air again. A state of shock, really. I do feel quite exhausted, but exhilarated. But my mind's in a complete spin, but I feel very happy. Next time, the battle for a place in the next round reaches its climax as the celebrities face their toughest critics yet. Get your stakes on. They make the grade, they stay. They don't cut the mustard, they're out the door. It's not singing out anything to me. It's beautiful. I'm really impressed. Come on, let's go.